stuff. You, you just have this constant look of. Man, but you, it's just, but it's you just didn't need the yellow. Here. You didn't need the yellow tint though, because you had the costumes and the and the vehicles and and the hairstyles. That will that will show you what time frame you're talking about. You don't need this yellow tint of. Let's put a yellow tint on here. It'll make it more seventies look. No, it just makes it more fucking annoying. <laughs> I'll remember to put a yellow tint on things from now on. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you. But I mean, as far as it goes, I, I would say again, I'm not I am not a director. I'm a per, I'm an idea man, but when it comes to directing something you've already done, it's cheating. Flat out cheating. It's like putting lead in the gloves, buddy. You've already done the movie. Why do it again? Why do it the same way? Literally, I can probably line that movie up side by side and you have the same exact thing over and over again. My guy being new to it, everyone starts somewhere. Everyone starts somewhere. And to me, I think this is a better start than uh, Wildcats. Well, let me say this. As far as far as putting it side by side with Bad News Bears, with Wildcats, you had a, you had a woman who um, was very studied, um, she, you know, she was very familiar with football. She knew the ins and outs. She knew what plays to run. She knew what kind of setups to go with on defense. She knew all of that. Um, and this was her rise. This was her um, rise to becoming what she wanted to do, and which was be a coach. She wanted to do that from the very beginning of the film um, with Bad News Bears. Well, she was already a coach. No, she wasn't. She yeah, was she, a track she's coach. a track coach. Yeah, but that's coach. not what she wanted to do. But she was a coach. That's not what she wanted to do. She wanted to be a football coach. With Bad News Bears, um, Walter Matthau's character is just a drunk and is only doing it um, just for a paycheck. He doesn't give a shit about anything else. What did he do before he became a drunk? He he was yes. Well, he what, was, what was he? he no, nope, answer the coach. question. He was a coach, and but, he was what what kind of? But coach? he was only he was like one of the best coaches in 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 the sport, right? I I don't know about that for sure. However. The only reason he did, he, the only reason he coached these kids was for the paycheck. He didn't get. But the parallel about it I'm that. drawing is not about the actual people in the movie. I'm talking about the parallel of the movies. Like, what is the movie about? They're the same story. Now, this is about a woman in a man's world that is. It's trying, a man's world. Yes, the fuck <laughs> Brown. and she is trying to be. I can only sing. <laughs> she's trying to become what only men are, and it's and it's her struggle. To become that, and then she ends up, re, you know, getting that in the end. And this and movie, and, and, and in my movie, movie, in my movie, it's a man's struggle to better himself by becoming a professional football player and living the dream that he and all of his friends have had all their life. This this movie itself was ahead of its time as far as um, films. You didn't really have any films before this that really showed a woman in a man's world trying to make it. You didn't have that. This one, this one did it. And so it's in that aspect, it's it's very much ahead of its time. You know, if we had more time on the show, I could probably show you about three or four different movies that have that same subplot. Labyrinth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to uh, production. All right, and uh, go ahead and uh, Corey, why don't you go ahead and start this one as well? I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of Wikipedia knowledge mm. coming out of this. Thing. No, no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, again, this was, I think this was set in Chicago. Is that, is that yes, right? it was set in Chicago. Um, I didn't, I didn't catch that, but, um, so, you know, it's set in Chicago, it's filmed in Chicago, so you have everything that's, uh, I think it's chicago uh, the, you know, so that, that's all set up, and, um, again, it's set in present time, so they didn't really have to, uh, worry too much about, uh, wardrobe, they just basically could just use what, what was, you know, current. And, uh, and it looked very 80s, which is fine, because it's an, an, an 80s film. Um, as far as uh, everything else goes, you had, uh, it's, you know, most a lot of the football scenes were taking place on a uh, high school football field, which very much looked like a high school football field. And uh, unlike Invincible, um, it was very realistic. And I say that because in Invincible... It was supposed to take, there was a lot of scenes uh, in Philadelphia that were taking place at Veterans Stadium, but it wasn't a Veterans Stadium. Veterans Stadium didn't have a track that went around the outside of it, unlike um, the one in this film. 
Again, Wikipedia knowledge. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, first of all, Veteran Stadium wasn't around for them to actually film it in, so you true. can't exactly hold them Very to true. that. Very true. And I knew you were going to say can't, that. Yeah, they, couldn't, they couldn't use the link and because it's way too modern for them to do that. Like, everything in there, would, there's nothing they could do. So what did they use? They used a stadium from one of the schools that, they actually, that was the actual training ground for the Eagles, but would also match the era because that stadium was built the same time that, um, that uh, their stadium was built. So if you're talking about trying to be closer to real, realistic, that's much better than, than the uh, warehouse in the warehouse district they filmed your movie in, in which that school was actually an old uh, uh, canning plant or something like that. It wasn't even a school. So, I mean, if you're going to draw those parallels, then we'll draw those parallels. Well, it's fine, because I knew you were going to bring up, well, Veteran Stadium wasn't around. Yes, <laughs> I knew you were going to say that, and because, uh, because that's where CGI comes in. You can, you can, if you've got to go to a stadium and make it look a little worse, you can go in there with CGI and you can, you can change it. You can, hell, they did it in, they did it in RoboCop. Do you remember what year this movie was made? This this movie, uh, which one? Mine. Yours uh, was 2006? They didn't do the whole lot of CGI like they do today to change backdrops. Let me stop. That's me, quite expensive. Let me stop you right there. In RoboCop. Yes, going back before your film was made, they actually had uh, some of the office buildings. Were, the way you see them in the film didn't look like that. Long because shots. Because director, director point. Those were all long shots. And long shots are backgrounds that are very easily scrubbed, changed, and can be and can be fixed. Exactly. When you're talking about an entire stadium with actual people seated in it, because they invited people in for that for those games in right. order to, to give it a real feel, you're not going to be able to scrub that. Those are small. All sections. you have to do is take the track out. Just put grass over it. <laughs> it's easy CGI. It doesn't. It's... So this track is what's is what's chafing. Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. Because if you want to make things realistic, going back to the whole biopic thing, if you're going to make things realistic, they didn't have a track around there. Get rid of it. Make sure that should be your one thing going. We need to get rid of that. That wasn't there. This is a biopic. This is supposed to be a realistic, even though we're changing facts. Well, if that's we need the, to get rid okay. of that. That's it. Okay, so this track is what's chafing your butt. But as yes. a film director, your movie that you, were so, that you think is so great, Woody Harrelson, as the slot back, um... Ball gets the ball, starts running, miraculously turns into a black man. Face, <laughs> hands, wearing white gloves, right. wearing white gloves, runs the ball in for a touchdown, jumps up, and is miraculously Woody Harrelson again I with see, no gloves on. I see you've been um, reading you IMDb even, trivia. You don't even need to. No, I actually watched it. <laughs> you don't even need to. You don't even need to CGI that out. Just make Harold make make Woody run, run Woody run. Come on! If you're gonna go, if you're gonna if you're getting chapped over a track, that's the that's one of the simplest things to fix. Put Woody Harrelson in the uniform and make him run. He was sick that day. Uh, that's what it was. Yes. Is that documented? I don't think yes. so. Yes, I'll show you later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about music. Vic, <laughs> go on. ahead, lead us off here. Let me let me let me let me just clue you in on this. Uh, <coughs> It's the sport of kings. Better than diamond rings. Football! <laughs> That's what that thing sounded like. It was horrible. Downright disgusting. <laughs> oh, are we going to play it? I'm just holding my phone here. If we're going to subject our listeners to this... This is this is 80s right here. That's I, 80s rap. Yes. The, I defer to the man who has made a, a a point to tell people about rap in his comedy. Is that any good? I'm not saying I'm it's going good. to the ref on this. I'm not, that is I didn't horrible. Say, I didn't say it was good. I said that was 80s. That was typical of 80s rap. Okay, so not in the entire genre. Don't we're, get me talking, wrong on we're that. We're talking about we're talking about a time period in which you're saying that the the clothing was correct, the the rap music was correct. Because I can name you 500 other things in the 80s that was 10 times better than that. The original was done by LL Cool J. I know who it was done by. Why they re- they should have used that? 
They did. It's in the film. It's in the opening credits. They should have used that. And what they did in the closing credits, they used that same song, except they changed it for each character. And with her saying football, because it's funny. Because it's horrible. Well, it it was horrible. Tell tell me it wasn't horrible. It's it's 80s. It was horrible. It's it's (laughs) 80s. And so, so um, what Invincible do? They just they just dug up a whole bunch they use of the set, sounds, the soundtrack, a, bu- a bunch of seventies cl- classic rock songs. They just which, reused it. Hold all. on, who, who was who were the main characters in this movie? Marky Mark. No, no, no. What do you what, want to be? What, it's a funky let's, bunch let's, no, let's talk. Let's talk about who the characters were in this movie because you're saying uh, that you, oh, it was eighty it was eighties rap and it was it was it was in the eighties. And there were a bunch of black people in it, so it had to be rap music, obviously, because the main character was actually this this like middle aged white woman. So like I was figuring they would have had some music for her in it, but we won't go there. Like the Carpenters. So <laughs> like if we're talking about you know we're talking about rainy days of my you know always bring me down. The the music of the time is what it's going to be. They had a bunch of white guys in Philadelphia, which by the way this movie pissed me off. Actually, I will degrade my own movie for one second because the only time they show black people is movie was when they were playing football. <laughs> Apparently there are no black people in Philadelphia and I know that to be a lie because I live there. Oh, this is a white side of town. South Philly? There's... I don't know. There weren't any Asians. There weren't any Asians and there's more Asians in South Philly than there are <laughs> white people, I think. I don't know. Never but been, either way, the, the music fit the time and I think that the, the choice of music was literally, you know, basically 70s classic rock and it, it, was, it fit the mood of the movie. It did, Bottom but line. it wasn't original music. It like, did, like in Wildcats, where the, where they remade re- they remade a a, a a song to fit that the was people. an original song to this movie. I, that's the first time I had heard that song. I don't think I've heard it on any of his albums. Yeah, because he's embarrassed by it. Well, that's beside the point. It's still original. <laughs> it's original to this film. Unlike <laughs> every time unlike I take Invincible. a shit, it's original too. But yes. it doesn't mean that it's the greatest thing ever. Yes, <laughs> unlike Invincible, where the the music was just what can we get for what can we get for uh, five grand? We can get all these songs. All right, great. So you know, it's like they didn't really have to go out on the ledge to try and try and get as opposed music. to buying one song and rewriting it so they didn't have to buy any others. Right. Yep. <laughs> All right, let's get a uh, last gasp. Get yourselves off the mat. Each have one last big punch. Let's hear the closing arguments. As a filmmaker, which you are, sir, you cannot tell me that all the glaring bloopers, fuck ups, and ridiculousness in this movie did not drive you nuts. Nope. Liar! <laughs> There were so many blatant problems with this movie between, you know, the, the, it's just ridiculous. I can't even go any further. I'm done. Um, Wildcats made $26 million. And I'm currently trying to look to see here. Um, I'm trying to compare it. Uh, it looks like, uh, it only made, Invincible only made $17 million. Uh, in their opening weekend were Wildcats. Yeah, but I bet you their profit margin was higher since you had this humongous cast of people. Yes. They had, yeah, but they were all, that was all in the beginning of their career. Wait, they made $26 million opening weekend? Opening million, uh, opening weekend, Wildcats made $5 million, while Invincible made 17 Now, they've made... Opening weekend, we made 17 Yes. Yes. Okay, so... Now... We made more money opening weekend... Right. ...than, than your movie made... 20 years prior... So there is there is that. Uh, the oh, so now we're, we're adjusting for inflation. Yes, we are. Um, <laughs> Which hold on, I'm going to roll back before in your argument that we don't do that because that was brought up in a prior fight. So no. Okay. <laughs> Fine then. <laughs> well, I'm sure I'm sure Invincible was on more screens as well though. So it doesn't say <laughs> why because they thought it was a better movie to put out. No, because there wasn't as many theaters. As there were more. Are. No, that's a lie. There were more theaters. There were more theaters prior to uh, like 2000 than there ever were now. So like the, the decline of the movie of the movie theater has happened over the years going forward, not backwards. There were a lot more movie theaters because that was the primary form. We didn't have the internet. We didn't have all this stuff to be able to watch things at home. That was the main source of movie of, of you know movie patronage. So if your movie came out before mine, there should have been a lot more bucks in those seats. Um, it looks like at the most they were in on nine hundred and sixty five screens. That's Wildcats. 
Now, Invincible uh, was in over 2,000. Actually, uh, they were in almost 3,000. So, there's a big, there's a big difference there. Better marketing.